When we think of money, it's usually in terms of what things we can buy with it. But your level of wealth doesn't only determine what you own, it can determine entirely what your life looks like. And I wanted to give a bit of an overview of what that could look like at some different intervals. Now, at the bottom of the pyramid, of course, we have the alcoholic, amphetamine-abusing lowlife who mooch off public services because they can't pay their debts or find a job. Fucking grad students. Disgusting. Next, we have the working and middle class, which makes up about 90% of the population. Even though it might seem like they can't accomplish much compared to the elites of society, members of the middle class can work together to become much more powerful. As an example, with one roommate they can afford rent, but with two they can afford furniture. The middle class earns up to 300000 a year, but the median individual income is a lot more modest at 38000 This can be pretty misleading though, because if you're 50 with a wife and two kids, 38 k a year is pretty rough. But if you're 21 and single, you're buying resell Yeezys thinking, man, I wonder how much sex I'd have if I didn't live with my parents. So in conjunction, I think there are a couple lifestyle indicators to check to see if you're in the middle class, such as your grandparents had five kids, your parents had three kids, and you're going to put a stop to it once and for all. And you don't have an emergency fund because you figure that if you're on vacation, your appendix gives out, why would you spend 20k on surgery when you could just die? So moving beyond the middle class, we get to the start of your truly wealthy people. These are notorious 1% who typically have an individual income of 300,000 or higher or a net worth of over 8 million. Usually this means you have more than one home, active investments, travel whenever you want, and basically have the best of everything short of private jets and a Battlefront 2 season pass. But in the same way someone in the arts might wave their fist at an accomplished engineer, there's a huge difference between people within the 1%. As an example, if you're worth 75 million, you have the ability to see almost anyone in the world just by asking. But if you're worth 75 billion, you have the ability to see almost anyone in the world without asking. Once you're worth over 100 million dollars, people use your first and last name when they talk about you. And if you're not famous, you at least have a Wikipedia page that you didn't make yourself. You likely make up to 10 million a year, which to compare with a more normal income is like going to Costco and paying $1.50 for a hot dog, but getting 100 hot dogs. I don't know why I left that in. Um, at this point, your wealth is almost magnetic to more wealth, and ironically, things start costing less. I could pay $5,000 for a Gucci suit, and people might think I'm cool, but if I were actually cool, Gucci would have paid me to wear it. While it sounds pretty great, you might start to wonder if people like you for you, or only like you because you're rich and famous. Fortunately, though, you are rich and famous. So finally, at the very top of the pyramid, we have the people worth over a billion dollars, the 0.001%. Guys like Elon, Jeff, Branson, and Bill. These people have so much money, they can literally change the world. Save the kids, done. Create your own space program, done. Dinner with the president, you are the president. You don't fly business, you buy the business. When you get pet supplies from Amazon, you mean the rainforest. And when you say, hey babe, how about I drive this time? You're talking to the car. If you look at the absolute top, Jeff Bezos recently overtook Bill Gates, and to be as rich as the two of them, you would have to earn about $5,000 every minute you were alive. They even said themselves, I don't think I could even spend the money if I tried. Fucking amateurs. Now with the pyramid capped off, if we step back, it does seem like the implication here is that your life gets better the more money you have, which brings about the age-old question of does money buy you happiness? And from what I've looked at, I think the best explanation is that money won't buy you happiness, but it can make problems go away that make you unhappy. Like when you go to take money out of your bank account and get charged a fee because there's no money in your bank account. Or when you buy tickets online, you have to pay extra for doing all the work yourself. With that said, I wanted to end it at that point, but I showed my friend and she said, is that it? Is it just first world countries? What about the rest of the world? And you know, like they say, you, you can't make your sneakers and wear them too. Um, the good news is that my demographics show that there aren't many people in third world countries watching my videos. They don't have internet. So um, we'll worry about that another time. Um, as a quick side note, if you want to get an audio version of any of my videos, you can go to the CastBox app or website and subscribe to the Casually Explained channel. Um, right now, I think there's only one video uploaded there, but the rest are going to be processing over the next day or two, and you can get an audio version of all the latest uh, videos that I make, and maybe like a little bit of exclusive, you know, audio-only content coming up in the future. So go check that out. That'd be great. Thank you.